Other than modeling, texturing is probably the most time-consuming task a game artist has to wrestle through. Fortunately, Algorithmic has opened up their texturing pipeline tool called Substance to anyone that has joined this challenge. Now in this video, our good friend Wes will explain how to use it and how to quickly get more texturing productivity out of your day than you'd ever expected. In this video, I will show you how to utilize the one-click gun substance to texture your weapon assets. The substance consists of a single graph and allows you to apply up to four materials to your weapons. The materials are applied based on a four-color SVG mask. The process consists of applying material IDs to a mesh in your 3D program, using Substance Designer's built-in baking tools to create maps that modulate the effects, and then finally creating your custom materials and simply plugging them into the graph. Let's start by taking a quick tour of the graph. On this far left side is where we're going to be able to create our custom materials. So you can see that this is material 4, here's material 3, material 2, and material 1. Those materials then get plugged into this middle section here of the graph, which then modulates the effects, allows us to add different things like weathering and, and edge wear and dirt. The bottom section here is where we can actually add in our own mask that can help further mask this effect. And then finally here at the far right is where we're going to output our map. So for instance, here you can see that we have a diffuse texture, we have a specular map, and then finally we have a normal map that you can use with your assets. So if we go back to the beginning here and we take a look at these materials, the graph has uh, a lot of comments in it. So the first material here, it says that material 1 will be applied to the, the SVG black area. Material 2 will be applied to the SVG red area. The material 3 will be to the green area. And then material 4 will be to the blue area. So we have four colors that each one of these materials are going to be masked by. Now the SVG node is here at the bottom. So it's going to be our first mask node. And if we take a look at this, you can see that we basically have the UVs for this weapon. And each of the UVs shells have been color coded with one of those four material colors. And this map is going to dictate where the materials are actually placed on the geometry itself. Creating this SVG map here in Substance Designer is an automated process. So for example, let's jump over here to Maya, and this is just a 3D app that I'm going to use for demonstration purposes. And here we have the SCAR uh, weapon, and you can notice that I have those four colors. So we have the red, black, green, and blue. And what you're going to want to do in your 3D program is you're going to want to create these four materials, and then right before you export an FBX file for texturing inside a Substance Designer, what you're going to want to do is take one of these four materials and assign those to the sections of your weapon where you want to assign specific materials. So for instance, let's take a look at this red. If I select this red material and I'm going to actually select the polygons associated with that. So if we take a look at this, we've got these polygons associated. Let's go over and take a quick look at the UV texture editor. And here you can see in the UV texture editor uh, the UVs that are highlighted with that polygon selection. Now we go back over to Substance Designer. We can see that here in that SVG map, the red area, which is uh, correlating to those UV shells, uh, this is red. And this is where our camouflage material is being applied. If we zoom in onto this area, you can see that these nodes right here are making up our camouflage texture. And then there's a note here that says this is material 2 and that it will be applied to the SVG red area. Now once you've exported your FBX file from your 3D application and you're going to use that here in Substance Designer, you can go ahead and load this, this into the viewport. So here we'll come up to Geometry and I'm just going to do a reload of the mesh so you can see this from scratch. So now here we have the weapon. Uh, it doesn't have any materials applied to it yet. I'm going to click this Scene Explorer button here and you can see that this FBX, it reads in the material ID. So again, we have four material IDs associated with this. So now when I want to actually go to texture the graph, all I've got to do is take this simple graph or this one single graph and just drag and drop it and assign it to each one of these materials. So we'll do the 186 material, uh, we'll do the 187, and as you can see as I start to drag and drop that graph onto the material, the uh, the the uh, materials are, or excuse me, the texture being updated on the weapon itself. So here we go, we'll put it on our final material, and now our weapon is fully textured. Creating your own SVG node here in Substance Designer for your custom texturing is a very simple process. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over to our Substance package and we're going to link in a 3D mesh. Now in this case I'm going to use this scar underscore demo dot FBX. I'm going to open this file. And now a resources folder has been added to my package and here you can see that we have the model. So now I'm just going to right click and I'm going to go to the bake model information and that's going to break, open up my scene information baking window. And now you can see that the FBX has uh, been read in and you can see that Substance Designer sees that there are four material IDs associated with that and with that the material color has come across. So now you can see that by setting up those materials inside of our 3D application it makes it extremely easy to 
extract that text that excuse me that material color information and use that for our SVG node. So what we're going to do is we're come over to this information to bake, and we have several maps we can bake. But in this case, we want to bake a we want to do a convert UV to SVG, and uh, we'll leave our output size at 1K, and then we want to make sure that our color mode is set to material ID color. So there's different options we can have, but the material ID color is going to colorize these UV shells with the SVG graphic, and it's going to be based on the colors that we have set here in this color section. And so now that we have that in place, uh, we're going to leave, uh, we can set the resource name, uh, we got the file format, and then we can choose to link or embed this into our substance package, and then finally we can select a folder to place this into. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and just click the OK button. And now that map's been baked, and we have a new resources folder here. And I'm just going to drop this down. And now if I just double-click this map, you can see that here is that SVG map is all ready for us to use in our project. And it was very simple and an automated process. Now, to set up this new masking, all I have to do is drag and drop this file right here into my graph. And we'll zoom in on the graph, and I'll show you where this is connected. So we have a note here that says that you need to replace your with your own SVG node, and so we do have one here. And uh, what we'll do is we'll just follow this connection. Now this is going to be uh, a node here that we're going to be connecting all of our materials into. And at this very bottom switch, you can see, or excuse me, this input node, you can see that it, this is where it's calling for the SVG mask. So once we have that node in place, all we have to do is just left click, drag and drop, and make a connection. Now that we've discussed how the materials are assigned, let's take a look at this node here. This is going to be our main junction node. And so we have some comment to this, and it says here that this is going to be the node where we input the four materials that we want to apply onto our mesh. And we've also discussed how that last input is going to be the SVG node. And again, it talks about how the colors applied to this mask will set where the material will be. And so what I want to point out is at this node you can see that there's three map types that, that for each material that's coming in. So you can see that we've got material 1 is diffuse black, material 1 specular, material 1 normal. And notice it also has the color by it. So this indication here tells you that it's material 1 that we're talking about. It talks about the map type that it needs, so diffuse, and then finally what color that it's going to uh, relate to here in the SVG node. So for each one of these nodes or each one of your materials, you're going to break that material into a diffuse texture, a specular texture, and a normal. And so all you have to do is once you have that material set, you just plug it right into this junction node. So we have diffuse, specular, normal, and then we'll come down and look at the next set. Here we have, this is talking about material 2, this is diffuse red, material 2 specular red, and material 2 normal red. So let's go ahead and zoom out here. And so here's our material 2, and we know that this is our camouflage material. And so you can see that what this junction here of nodes does is it sets up a material for our camouflage. It creates a normal map and it creates a specular map. And so each one of those outputs are then piped straight into its corresponding material 2 input on si inside of this main junction node here. So again, we've got material 2 red, excuse me, material 2 diffuse, material 2 specular, and material 2 normal. And once you have all of those connections set up and you have your SVG node in place, your materials will be applied correctly once you add the graph to the model. Now that we have our materials piped into the main junction node and we've created our SVG node, there's a couple other nodes that we're going to have to create as well. So if we kind of zoom in here, we're going to need to create ourselves a curvature map, an ambient occlusion map, and a world space normal. And these maps are used to modulate the texture effect nodes. Now creating these nodes, again, is just like the SVG, is a very simple and automated process by just using a model bake information. So if we take a look here, we've got, this is what our curvature map looks like. Then finally here we have our ambient occlusion. And here's our world space normal. So to create these maps, we're going to come over here to our resources. We have our model already imported, so let's just right click. Let's go to our bake model information. And then just as before, you can see that our information to bake, here's where we can bake an ambient occlusion map. We can also bake our curvature map at this point. And uh, for instance, our curvature map, it's going to ask us for a world space, excuse me, a normal map. And so what we're going to do with this is uh, you can actually bake a normal map right here inside of Substance Designer, so our normal map for mesh. So if we come into our normal map for mesh option, what we can do is we can load in our high definition mesh and we can actually bake ourselves a normal map that's going to be utilized by these other maps. So for instance our curvature map we would then feed in that normal map that we just baked and then finally our world space normals will also feed in that same normal map. Once we have all these maps baked we can then just drag and drop those here and then just hook them straight up into the nodes that are, that are being modulated by these maps. 
Now that we have all of our maps hooked up, we can actually get to the fun process of going through and actually tweaking these textures. And so these middle section nodes that you see right here, these are going to be the ones that are going to allow us to actually modulate the texture. So we, there's some notes by each one of them. So this first one here works with uh, damaged paint. We also have some here that works with uh, damaged metal. Uh, we've got some dirt. We also have the ability to add dust and sand. And then finally, we have uh, the ability to add some details on the diffuse and the specular map. So all you have to do is just select one of these nodes. And if you come over to the parameters, the instance parameters, you'll have uh, just sliders that you can just drag. And to make these changes is very simple. And it's also very visual. So we'll also come over to and we'll take a look at the dirt. We can actually um, add some smoothness. Uh, we can change how the uh, diffuse opacity works uh, for that dirt. If we come over here, we can see that we can actually change the, the dirt color here. We can change how much the opacity is affecting the diffuse and specular channels. Uh, also, again, just going through and looking through our instance parameters, we can uh, work with uh, the diffuse pre-lighting. Uh, we can use uh, AO intensity upon that diffuse and things like that. So we can actually utilize these nodes across the bottom, uh, across this middle section here to add wear and tear to the edges and things like that to the maps. And again, like I said, you just select the node and come over to the instant instance parameters and just tweak the settings until uh, you find a desired result. One final thing I'd like to cover are these masking nodes. So let's just kind of zoom into this area here and you can see that we have a mask node. So I'll just double click here to load this into the 2D view and you can see that we've got a very simple black and white mask. And what this mask does is that it's a mask to apply weathering to this area that's inside of the white. And so in our case, this is going to be our camouflage texture. So we're going to take a look at how that mask is actually affecting this node here. So if we select this node, I'm just going to double click to load this into the 2D view. And we'll kind of zoom in on this area here of the camouflage. And we'll do the same thing in our 3D viewport. And so with this node selected, we can see that the final input here, and if we zoom in close, you can see it's a grayscale input and then it's asking for a paint mask. So that's the input that it's asking for and that's what we're feeding it. And so if we come in and take a look at maybe adjusting the edge width, so as I start to you know, pull this forward, you can see that we're we're eroding the edge and, and we're really affecting the way the camouflage uh, texture or the camouflage material is being applied onto this um, onto our object uh, and again this is masking uh, the instead of that wedge uh, excuse me that edge wear happening uh, on the entire uh, on the entire texture it's only taking place here in this mask where there is white we have a similar mask here for this node. So if we kind of zoom in on this guy, so this mo this node is actually uh, adding uh, sharp edges and uh, excuse me damage on the edges around the metal. So if we come down here, we can see that we have another mask uh, that you can create and then just pipe that into this node here at the bottom. And the same thing, the final node here, it's you can see that it's looking for an input of a metal mask. It's a grayscale, so it just needs a black and white or a grayscale value mask. Now both of these masks are. S SVG, and you can easily create that here in Substance Designer. So what you can do is just come over here to your package. We'll do a right click and we'll say a new, uh, we'll say a new vector graphic. And then uh, we'll leave this here at uh, 1024. Uh, for this, we'll just call this uh, demo uh, SVG and then click OK. And that's going to be placed here in our resource folder. So if we uh, look over here in our 2D view, and I'll, I'll go ahead and just frame this up, you can see that we have this 1K texture. And now we can actually start to work with this um, work with our vector tools. Now something else that you can do that's uh, very helpful is you can uh, import in the uh, a UV snapshot. So if you're 3D program, you can export the UVs out so you can actually paint over them. If you would like, you could go over here to the geometry tab and you could display the UVs from the geometry in the 2D view. However, I like to add just my own UV uh, background because you can actually adjust the opacity. So what we'll do is we'll click this button here and um, you can see that we now have the ability to uh, actually adjust the opacity of this. Now I had actually already brought in this UV set so once we have this in place if you do not have one if you do not have uh, an image placed in this background uh, it will ask you to navigate you know the directory and you'll find the image but you can also replace that here as you can click this folder bu uh, button here and you can load in a new background but what you have uh, which is nice about loading in a custom background is you have this nice little slider here so what you can do is just pull your UVs up so you can kind of see what you're actually going to be drawing over uh, and and then what you can do is you can come in and start to uh, grab hold of the pen tool here. And let's just kind of maximize this viewport here so we can see this a little bit better. Uh, and then it's just like your typical drawing application. Uh, let's see, we've got our pen tool active. Uh, then we can come in.
and we can start to draw in shapes. So what we want to do is change this from freehand to path, so we can work with the path feature. And so then I'll just kind of click and just start to draw in some vector shapes, just like you would in any kind of drawing program. So now we fill this in with white. Uh, we can also start to mask out a whole other area here, say at the top. And then again, we're using our UV as a template to kind of draw over in the background. Uh, what we can also do is here you can see that we have transparency enabled. So let's just go ahead and turn this off. So now we see that uh, you know it's just black in the background, and we can. Uh, uh, see much more clearly the shape that we're trying to generate here and then again we can adjust our opacity here of our UVs or bring those up so we can really see what we're working with and then once you have that set you can then use that SVG node so here we'll go ahead and just kind of pull this forward here and then we have this new SVG node we can just drag and drop this guy right here into our graph and now we have ourselves a custom node that we can use as a mask so you also don't want to forget your normal map. So uh, here we have uh, the normal map, and we also have a setting here. Let's go ahead and just turn off that background. And so here we have one more note here in our graph that says replace with your normal map. So we had talked earlier in the video about being able to bake the model information that we could actually bake uh, normal maps from a high res mesh to a low res mesh right here in Substance Designer. So once you have that normal map created, or even if you created your normal map in another application, you can import in that file or link that into your uh, Substance package. And then again, you're just going to drag and drop that here into your graph, and then you're going to make that connection here. So it says this node adds details on the mesh normal. Uh, so you're just going to go ahead and put this into the second input where it says normal. So that covers this walkthrough on using the one-click gun substance. As you can see, Substance Designer is a powerful texturing tool set with the ability to create reusable graphs and filters that can quickly and easily be applied to various assets.